team and thank you so much for joining me for today's session. The purpose of today's session is to introduce you to a resource by the name of Hemingway Editor. In my opinion, it would be a useful resource for your students to utilize this when it comes to gaining feedback prior to submitting student work. I've gone over to Google Drive and I've opened up Google Drive and then I located a specific document that I wanted to be reviewed and I have opened that sample document here. This is a document that I use as a teaching sample, as an exemplar when I'm working with students so that they understand what the final product should look like. As you're teaching your students how to use the Hemingway editor, I would have the students come in and select the text. If I use control A, A like Apple, my entire screen is going to illuminate the working space that is. So let me say that again. I held the control button down on my keyboard and then I touched the letter A for Apple. And what happened is the entire document was illuminated or selected. Now this is one strategy. It doesn't mean it's the perfect strategy because when I do that, the picture of the children at the bottom will also be selected. And that's really not my objective or my desire. So I'm going to come down to the very bottom. I'm going to click at the very end of the last piece of punctuation at the end of the last sentence. I'm going to hold my index finger down on the mouse and then I'm going to leave my index finger down on the mouse while I scoot all the way up to the top of the document. Once I have included the very first letter of the entire document, the part that's important to me that I need reviewed, then I'm going to let go of my mouse. On my keyboard, I'm going to hold control down and then I'm going to touch the letter C, C for copy. I have now copied all of that information. I'm going to scoot, scoot over to the Hemingway editor. When you first arrive at the Hemingway editor, it shows you a sample on the screen and you're not exactly sure like, well, what do I do? How does this work? <laughs> Down here it says paste in something you're working on and edit away. Or you can come up here and click right and then type directly on the screen. However, in my opinion, it is smarter to write all of that in Google Docs and then copy and paste in here. Now, the same illuminating strategy that I just used, used inside of Google Docs, I've come over here, I've scooted over all of that text that I want to get rid of. I'm going to choose backspace on my computer. I only have one strategy that's going to work in here uh, so that I can paste my work in here. I cannot use the right click strategy followed by paste. I must use the keyboard shortcut of control and V for victory. I'm going to hold control down on my keyboard. I'm going to touch the letter V for victory. And now my entire document has appeared in this space. On the right hand side, it shows that the complexity of this text is about a seventh grade reading level. It shows that there are 424 words in the text. And then if um, the number of sentences or paragraphs is important or the number of characters is important, then I can use the show more button in order to show that information. On the right hand side, you'll notice blue, green. It's sort of a pinkish color, banana, and then rose. Those are the five colors that I'll address over here. On that right hand side where your text has been illuminated, highlighted on the left, you can see what those critical suggestions are. Now, just because the Hemingway editor comes in and provides you with these uh, suggestions doesn't mean that you're forced to go back and make any modifications to your original text. However, it is helpful from time to time to see what the Hemingway editor does have to say because feedback usually drives us to become better writers. So let me head to the top of the document. Let me hover on top of the blue item right here where it says negatively. If I hover on top of that, the suggestion is that I should omit that word, that I should get rid of it. Effects of blue light, concentration, and decreased relationship building all impact people when they have too much screen time. So quite frankly, the sentence can exist without the word negatively, 
but negatively clearly shows the reader exactly what I want to communicate. When I come down right over here, it's illuminated yellow. And according to Hemingway, Hemingway thinks that these sentences are a little bit difficult for my reader. Sometimes it takes people 20 to 40 minutes longer to fall asleep if they were recently on screens. Well, if my reader might have some difficulties reading that sentence, maybe I can move words around. In addition to that, you'll see this purplish color over here. It says three phrases have simpler alternatives. So when I hover on top of this, there are three suggestions. I can either omit or replace. And if I click right here, it's going to replace that word for me. It jumped around a little bit, and now I can't remember where I was unless I pay attention to that blinking light. So now that I've returned to that spot, I can continue on. If I hover on top of the green item, it shows me that it's a passive voice that I'm using, and I should use an active voice depending on the genre. And not every one of these items has a suggestion to go along with it, but if I lean in, to evaluate that feedback, I can determine if it's perfect for my writing objective or if I'm not so keen on using that idea. I'm going to come over here. It is essential. Well, maybe essential is it is essential it must be too, might be too wordy. So maybe I'll choose the word must. That's one that's one negative comment I have about this resource is that it jumps you around when you make some of those changes. Let me read the sentence to see if I like it better. Must that we limit? I do not like that. I like what it said prior to that. I'm going to go back to what I originally said. Whoa, wait a minute, Mrs. Culver. How did you fix that? On my keyboard, I used control Z for zebra, which is undo. So if I undo, if I want to undo something that I recently did, control Z for zebra. Um, I'll show you what it looked like a second ago. So must that we, ooh, that's, that's strange. That, that does not sound like a good sentence. Control Z like zebra. And you'll notice how it pops back in. It is essential. We need that verb in there for that sentence to function properly. All right, friends, back to one of those very early strategies that we used before we got, as we were getting started, I'm going to highlight all of that text. I'm going to do control C copy on my keyboard. I can come back into my original document, control V for victory. And unfortunately, wow, Mrs. Culver, that's a bad idea. Look at all that highlight. That's that's just not fantastic. I don't want to do that. All right, friends, let me explain the solution. So if I delete some of the text, okay, I'm going to highlight and I'm going to delete some, but I'm going to leave the first paragraph in here and I'm going to explain why in just a second. Let me press enter on my key keyboard. I'm going to do control V for victory. I'm going to paste all that brand new content in. And now I'm going to use the paint brush strategy. I'm going to come in here and click on something that's awesome. I'm going to pretend that it's my paint. I'm going to come over here and click on the paint brush and get my paint brush wet. And now I'm going to illuminate all of this text. I'm going to click and slide all the way down. Once I've come to the very bottom, I'm going to let go. And you'll notice how magically all of that text now looks like that very first paragraph. A few details I do need to fix. I need to come in and I need to indent every one of those paragraphs. If I feel like the spacing is a little bit off, I'm going to remove one extra hard return between each one of those paragraphs. I'm going to indent each of those. Another thing is I don't need two copies of the paragraph number one. So that's my job to be an excellent editor as a writer. I'm going to come through here. I'm going to delete paragraph number one. Paragraph number one is in its first spot where it belongs. One more hard return. Let me get rid of that. All right, friends. Now that I've applied some of those edits from the Hemingway editor, I can now turn in my project. All right, friends, thank you so much for watching today's video and have a great day.